Oh, yes. This is the Hardcore Marketing Show. I'm Casey Cheshire, your host for this epic journey. And today's show, sponsored by Cheshire Impact, on a mission to help people maximize their use of Pardot and Salesforce. CheshireImpact.com. Bam. Hey, everyone. Before we get started with the show, I'm excited to announce two things. First is that my book, Marketing Automation Unleashed, is now live on Amazon. So go get it. The second thing is we have a new sponsor, Qualified.com. I'm going to tell you about them in the next couple seconds here and also how you can get a free copy of my book thanks to them. So who are these people? Well, Qualified is the number one live chat and chatbot platform for Salesforce and Pardot. Sales reps can have real-time, personalized conversations with who? Your hottest website visitors. So I want you to know, I don't just partner with anyone. I genuinely love these guys. And the platform, we use it at my company. Our sales team loves it. We've closed a lot of deals based on it. Um, had a lot of great conversations with prospects too. So, you know, a lot of marketing these days is what? Hurry up and wait right? Fill out this form. And then if we pass you over to sales, maybe you'll swap six emails with them to find a good time to talk. But what if a prospect is doing research right now and they would chat now? Why not give them the opportunity? So the best part is your company actually decides what leads are worth a live chat. There's a lot of noise out there. You don't want to talk to everyone. So Qualified actually connects to Salesforce and Pardot and it's able to pull in lead and contact information so you can specifically know if you're talking to a VIP, a VP, a decision maker. It's really kind of like magic. Now, if you don't know who someone is, well, what happens then, Casey? Well, that's when the bots come in handy. Chat bots can then ask you know, questions to further qualify a lead. Find out if maybe this is someone you do want to talk to. And they can book meetings while your sales team is out. And they can wake up the next morning with a bunch of meetings on their calendar. Now, here's the promo. If you are a company that wants to give your sales team this ability, right, to be able to talk to decision makers right when they're on your website, do this. Go to qualify.com and start a chat, right? They use their own tool, of course. Start a chat. Tell them that Casey sent you. If you have Salesforce Pardot, when you schedule and then do a demo, they will send you a free copy of my book, Marketing Automation Unleashed. Not bad, right? Well, it's only while supplies last. So, Hop on this thing today. And that's it for sponsors. Let's get to the show. There it is. And we're live, streaming, recording. This is going to be a good one. I'm really stoked about this one. The person we're talking to today, who the guest who I can't wait to introduce you to, many have called her a miracle marketer. So <laughs> the holidays are coming up. We got, or if they're already passed, you can get back to the holidays if you're listening to it after the fact. The miracles can happen, and not just on 34th Street. It's going to be happening on this show today. And by the way, she is also a total badass in the Salesforce ecosystem. So if you have Salesforce, listen up. If you don't have Salesforce, maybe we'll talk you into it by the end of this podcast. But either way, she's also a U.S. Army veteran and an evangelist to veterans, which is fantastic. We'll talk more about that. 5X certified in the Salesforce space. That's a big deal. I'm not even 5X certified and I know everything. She's <laughs> yes, also a are. ranger on Trailhead, three times Maravis alumni, which we will talk about in a little bit. Laron Butler, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so cool having you on here and chatting. I see you all the time and, and on, on social and you are a thought leader. You're an evangelist all around the vet force and, and sales force. So the, t the theme, the topics for today, the idea of really getting to our marketing, maybe we'll talk some tech, talk a little sales force, talk about some chat tools, just really hashing, getting some miracles to happen here today. So <laughs> what I want to do is I want to pass you this thing. Hold on a second. It's really heavy. Okay, here, here it is. This is the Thor's hammer. So go ahead okay. and here, take that. Take that. There you go. Okay, you got it? Thank you. Right, it's heavy. Oh, see, you handle it like no big deal. For me, it's yes, super heavy. Yes, I'm strong. Strong, super strong. Army strong, right? So uh, oh. take that Thor's hammer and smash some kind of marketing myth, bogus strategy, misconception that just drives you bonkers. Okay, um, I got a couple, but let's start with number one. Um, how I can help make you a better miracle marketer today is 
to smash the myth that your brand isn't over everything, right? Yeah. Um, I know we love our branding, we love our colors, we love our imagery, but not to a fault where our message isn't shining through because you're so focused on, you know, your color scheme or your imagery or, you know, dress right dress, as we say yeah. in the army. Um, it's just one of those things where I'm starting to see, um, I see the brand, but I don't see the message. I can't connect with the message and that's important. So uh, don't be afraid to let your message stand out and it's okay. The likelihood is whoever you're targeting, they already know your branding. Right. Yeah. So this kid, I mean, branding, people say it's dead, then they say it's back and then they say it's dead. I, there's some importance to it, but well, I think what you're, we're getting at is some people just put it above everything and you're like, cool, that's your brand, but I don't even know what you do. Right. Absolutely. And even Salesforce, they're working on that right now. Yeah. Right. Um, we see that we know Salesforce, but we don't, a lot of people don't know what they do. And right. so that's a perfect example of how they're working to change their messaging, to express their message and not just their brand. That's right. a great example. Uh, we love you, Salesforce. I'm sorry. It just worked out that way. Well, no, but, I mean, um, they even came out. Was it was a couple months ago. Maybe it was yeah. half a year ago. Time flies so fast now where they were saying, how can we simplify our message? I mean, Salesforce was smart enough to go, hmm, we got to make sure we refine this for people to understand, like, what is a CRM? Let's, let's talk in everyone's language, not just the people that are used to do, using these tools. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so how do we do brand right then? You know, uh, you've seen, a, you've seen people obsess too much over it. Any, any suggestions on how to kind of balance it? Um, <laughs> way to put me on the spot. Nah, put you but, on the spot. Uh, no, I mean, um, what, have you seen it go right versus go wrong? And just, I think it goes right a lot. What makes it, what I, makes it I, work? I think it goes right a lot. What I, what I notice is maybe with smaller brands, newer brands, they focus more on their brand. They're not as confident and they want everyone to know who they are and they're still trying to establish brand name recognition. Yeah. And so I think where some growth can happen is more in that mid-market or small business market um, where you know brand recognition and, and um, brand establishment is important. Um, but I would say, you know, your brand is great, uh, but definitely your message, um, or your values should come first, you know, yeah. um, or your product, you know, depending on what, what, um, line of business you're in. Yeah. You see this all the time with some small company. I mean, we got the New York world tour happening like tomorrow for Salesforce and you get some little companies coming in there, just throwing their fleece blankets everywhere, trying to advertise. And you're like, that's cool. I will, I'll, I'll take a free blanket, but like, Absolutely. what do you guys do? And to your point, put your values out there, the value to the customer, like what's in it for them, not just, you know, Correct. tuning your own horn. And I really like the point you raised about sometimes a little companies are almost like that Napoleon complex where they're trying to be like, no, I'm big. I really am. I'm big. Right. And then they kind of overcompensate and you're like, yeah. I, okay. I mean, the, the big ones are almost, they don't even need to say it. They kind of act big. So it's almost like you know, acting big as opposed to necessarily trying to project it, you know, and trying to be pretend like you're big, just kind of be confident in yourself. Absolutely. Like we get it. You've got a great graphic artist and your, <laughs> yeah. your image is, your imagery is dope. Right. That's right. That's great. Now tell me what you do and why I should spend my money with you. Right. I mean, those little signs, have you seen those at like world tour ones or different, you know, sponsor signs where they'll have like the name of the company and then they can put like a bullet or a tagline underneath that. And I always think it's a miss when you see like a company, and this is probably your point, just totally a great example of like people not listening to you would be you have the name of the company and then they have some kind of goofy flowery marketing tagline and you, and you still don't know. Uh, and then they have this big colorful thing. It has their logo and then you still don't know. Like right. I'm going to be walking by, I'm going to avoid eye contact with the sales rep so I don't get looped right. in and brought, unless they got some good swag, in which case I'm exactly. all ears. Exactly. But like, I'm like, I don't know what you do. I still don't know what you do. And then the right. worst part is if you start talking to a sales rep and then after five minutes, you still don't know what they do. Oh yeah. That's, that's, that's it. I, I experienced that a little bit at, at, at Dreamforce. Did you this year? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, but I wasn't there to buy. I was, it was there. I was just there right. to have my first awesome experience. You know, this was so. your first one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hell yeah. How did yeah. it go? 
it was freaking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, definitely overwhelming. And there was so much that I didn't accomplish that when I got home, I'm like, how did you miss that? Like, you uh -huh. know, even things I signed up for that I didn't get to accomplish, but between, you know, well, you know, this is everyone's story. You know, maybe when I go a second time or a third time, I'll have a better routine or yeah. it'll be clear to me what's top priority and what's important. You know, I didn't even collect as much swag as I thought I would get because you had to like crisscross, you know, the whole, you know, from one building to the next to pick up a hat, you know, so, I know. Um, <laughs> so I, I did get a few, you know, key pieces, but you know, yeah. I mean, it's been, I've gone a, a, a bunch of years now and I kind of keep trying. The only way to keep track after a couple of years is who the concert was, right? So <laughs> exactly. this year it was Fleetwood Mac. That. So you can remember Fleetwood Mac. So when you talk to someone else seven years from now, you're in my shoes, you go, oh yeah, um, who was is, who is the concert this year? Oh, so-and-so. Yeah, yeah, I went, I went Fleetwood Mac year. You know? Right. I'm waiting for Beyonce year. So hopefully that'll uh, be next year. That would be legit. You know? I would, yeah. that would be, that would be cool. Cause sometimes we have like you know, Metallica and Green Day. Um, one year, Green Day, their sound tent. Did you hear about it? No. So it, it rained at the ballpark. I, I didn't go to this. Con I heard about it. Glad I didn't go because uh, their sound tent had like a square tent over, over the soundboard at the concert. It rained and all the water collected in there. Oh, wow. So instead of being a, a teepee, it kind of just, it all collected in there. It broke and you had gallons of water dropping on all those expensive soundboards. It shorted out the entire concert. Wow. And they tried playing acoustic for like 15 minutes and people are like, ah, I'm going to the next party. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But yeah, every year is like, oh, who was the concert? Who was the concert? But yeah, yeah, there's so many things and you just try to get as much as you can in and sleep later, right? You know, that's not the way. Oh, I didn't sleep. get any sleep. Yeah. I didn't get any sleep, but I was truly exhausted. It took me probably four days to recover. I think by the fifth day, I was like, okay, I can get back to normal life. It was, you get sick afterward? Usually people I get, didn't like, get sick. No, that's I good. didn't get sick, but I was very weak, you know, tired. Yeah. And, just exhausted pretty much laid uh, around yeah. totally totally yeah i mean it's it, it's fun that way but but to your point that we got us on this dreamforce tangent it, it can be really cool going around the expos at a dreamforce a world tour any kind of conference wherever you're at especially for the people listening when you go to these things don't necessarily just be a consumer be a marketer kind of looking around being like oh absolutely Who's doing it right you absolutely know? I, I think the key for me is to see what other people are doing and what works and emulate that. Like, I don't want to reinvent from the wheel and lose time and money, you know? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cause people will figure it out eventually, but like I, ideally you can skip the painful learning experiences of others by trying to learn from what they did. Did you see anything like you thought was good use of that, that kind of expo time or any bad, bad expo, you know, experiences like, and I'll give you one example. If the yeah. giveaway is too good, then your lead quality can fluctuate because I'll tell you oh, what, yeah. I got two kids. If I you got a stuffed that. animal, you know, you can scan my badge. I'll unsubscribe on Monday. Then my kids are, will be happy, you know? Right. <laughs> Whereas if it's like an okay giveaway, but if I'm actually interested in your software, maybe I'll be like, okay, let's do this. Right. I, I definitely can see that. Because if it's <laughs> iPad, everyone's signing up and yeah. it's up to you to dig through it later, you know? Right. Yeah, you can make it, it easier for yourself not to dig through it. <laughs> yeah, just give them a $50, you know, Visa card and, you know, uh, people who really want to do business with you will sign up. You know, um, I think, <laughs> right, it, one of these years it was, um, it was one of those, like, data analytics type companies. Oh, I forget. I get the name, man. They'd be they'd be sad if they heard, listen to this. But they were offering, like, <laughs> do a demo and we'll give you free Bose headset. To like oh. everyone, I'd be like, sign me up. <laughs> I'll sit through your thing for thirty minutes for that Absolutely. fifty dollar headset. Absolutely, am I a good lead for them? Not at all. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. I so. mean, it gets people talking, but I guess I forgot who it was already. So that doesn't. Yeah, matter. but it was three years ago. In all fairness, yeah. it was three years ago. And I'm getting so. old too, so you know. Yeah, yeah, that too. You know, so, so they didn't I, do half a bad job. No, not too bad. Um, question for you segmentation tell me about the i mean you got people building lists 
you got people going crazy with their, you know, the database and they're like, I got 80 million thousand in here and they're like <laughs> blasting off to them. What, what's your advice around that? I don't know if there's another myth you want to smash on that, but like, what are um, people doing right? What are they doing wrong? Uh, yes, let's smash myth number two. Sure. It's not about the mega list. It's about the quality of the list, right? Okay. It's not um, the you can still be profitable. Um, you can still be profitable with a small list. If your list is targeted, extremely targeted, and or you're sending the right content to the right people, you will definitely um, show results you know, quality results, quality actions from your list. So if you have a million people on your list, 500,000, 10,000 people on your list, but you only need 100 sales to be profitable or 50 sales to be profitable or in the green, why don't you start with a targeted, smaller target list, either test them, yeah. you know, do some things with them, um, and then see what your, your results are and then see if you can scale those results. Uh, or start smaller, I like that. And scale correct. That. Yeah. Or you know, duplicate that with a different segment or population, yeah. right? Do something similar. But you know, you hurt yourself and your list when you're blasting out messages. You know, instead of you know, when it comes to segmentation, right? Like, I don't want to send my entire list messages ten times a year or ten times a month when I could send five groups, two messages, you know, each, right? right? And then they're not, they're not likely to unsubscribe. They're likely to, especially maybe they're not ready today, but they're likely to engage and at least open, you know, and be comfortable with your content and not be in a, ru in a rush to unsubscribe from your list. Right. So that's definitely important. Um, you know, cause there's lots of money out there. Money, there's money in your list that is maybe not going to be yours this year or this month, <laughs> right. right? But if you if you get on their no nerves and you annoy them, you know they're definitely going to un unsubscribe, and it's lost revenue for you in the future, yeah. right? Because sometimes people are just watching you; they're watching, you know, your values and what you stand for, and um, you know they're observing. Maybe they're content where they are right now, but six months from now, that may not be the case. So, yeah. um, and. and you know, in some, you know, business segments, you know, people don't have much choice, you know, they're comfortable or they, you know, but you never know what um, a business is going to do to, you know, force, force the, the customer to start exploring other options. So right. you definitely just don't want to, you know, abuse or overmail your list. It makes sense, right? It's like people are so into the now like let's blast people now to your point they may not be ready now this might be future money for you it might be next year or maybe they're ready in six months but if you sacrifice I and mean, i love this point if you sacrifice the future for the now you may get those people that are ready now but they were going to be responding anyway so all you did is burn your bridges for all those other people that are going to be you know probably talking to you in six months or a year from now and they're right they're out they unsubscribe right. and you know how when you unsubscribe man you're out yeah you, you almost never come come back unless yeah. and, it, and if they do come back to the point of the product or service they came back for a reason you know what i mean yeah and they're intentional <laughs> and you right. probably could have kept them all along you know right right or they unsubscribe and then they're only subscribed to your competition who is more patient and and now they're just looped into their thought leadership and bye <laughs> somebody right. else's deal right um you know i once worked for uh this company and when i back in my day when i was like a, a wee marketing lad and uh <laughs> marketing manager back in the day and um and it was it was funny i was i didn't really know too much and we had these like monthly campaigns we had that was just the what exactly what you're describing not to do is what we did right i wasn't really in charge of this you know i was just sort of like part of the team so i was just kind of doing what i was supposed to do which was send out this campaign once a month and i remember the ceo of this company once asked me and he was like hey crazy because like that's what ceos talk like and and it's like <laughs> how many emails did we send last month you know and i actually knew like i don't usually know things but that was good that i knew because you could tell he's like hmm is this guy worth keeping around and i was like <laughs> Well, we sent a million emails this month. It was, it was like a roughly a million. So I was like, we sent a million emails okay. this month. And he was like, wow, okay, great. Next month, send a million and a half, right? 
That's what he said. And it's like, as if another half a million emails, right. The same people isn't just going to piss them all off. Right. <laughs> you know, like maybe if they're valuable and they're helpful, it, Oh, send another campaign this month. It's very helpful. Like that would be the thing to do. Not, yeah, just, just double it up. Maybe send a right. duplicate email. Then just blast them again. <laughs> they'll, they'll come around. It's not like they were buying Nike shoes or something. It's like technical software. Like you're not going to hurry someone up to your point, you know, hurry them up in the now. This is a complicated purchase. Right. They're going to need some time. They're going to need some nurturing, not this blasting. Right. Crazy. And I mean, and, and then think about other business units who are mailing to that same list, you know, about three different things or five different things. So um, I, I'm really seeing, you know, um, that there's a lot more room for me to grow and explore some new um, technology and some things that can just make the quality of messaging better, you know, more um, targeted and yeah, yeah. Um, interactive, you know, and, um, and so, I'm, you know, I'm excited for where things are going. Yeah, for sure. Anything particular you're excited about? Any kind of tech you're seeing out there that kind of has you <laughs> a little twinkle in your eye? Um, like, oh, or even, I uh, mean, I'm excited to learn more about, you know, interactive messaging. I've seen yeah. a little bit of it um, with Dreamforce, per se. Okay. Uh, you know, with, um, you know, will you be attending these events, you know, clicking, polling, things like that, oh, yeah. you know, like dynamically. Um, yeah. Correct. So I'm, I'm excited to, to, to be able to learn more and implement some of that. Cool. Cool. What about chat? I'm kind of, I'm kind of digging chat right now. I love chat. Um, yeah. I, there is some growth for me. Some of the first chat tools that I played around were more like, um, we had to build it out. So, yeah. you know, line by line you had to think through the whole flow of things and now i know there's some more intuitive tools out there um that was probably first generation chat we're probably in what second generation chat right now you know what's crazy i think we're actually <laughs> probably in like 10th generation chat really okay yeah. well uh, no, no, sorry. Still, like i thought the exact same thing i just was like a realization from like this morning because <laughs> um i was chatting with my friend keith who is also on the podcast again and and he he's in the like more of the b2c side b2c okay. and b it's like expensive b2c like wedding photography and stuff so people have to think about it like b2b but they can like pull the trigger like b2c correct he's over there and and he's been using chat for like five years so he was like oh yeah, i've been using chat for five years and i was like oh that's oh. right <laughs> B2C folks we've been using this for I, I guess i used it like 10 years ago and i did b2c and i was like Oh yeah. It's been around for a long time. It's just more recently that like the B2B Salesforce ecosystem is like chat, you know, and you got like drift and qualify. Well, like, if you're thinking you know? about servicing or are you thinking about like back and forth, two way communications, mm. you know, cause I think service chat has been around for a while, but I'm oh, more yeah. thinking about, you know, like, was he doing, was he making sales leveraging chat five years ago? I think so. Oh, well then, hey, I stand fully I corrected. So. No, but but to your point on the Salesforce ecosystem, like like live live chat, kind of like live agent type stuff, it's always been like service focused. You right. Know? Like, oh, your sprocket's not working, chat with a, a support rep. Right. Or here's really this made how it. to, you know. Yeah. But I'm I'm more thinking about closing deals, routing leads, yeah. um, you know, escalating to yep. hot leads from, you know, cold and warm leads you know, sending them down different journeys. Like um, when I was doing real estate, one of the things I had was, you know, if you're ready to buy within the next uh, 30 to 90 days, that was an immediate, you know, okay, we we'll route you this way. But anything else, if they said six months, it got routed into, you know, Oblivion. a drip campaign. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know drip campaign? Like exactly. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't worth my time right. to, to, to respond immediately. So and then I had a few, you know, um, a little bit of a flow to kind of figure out like who needs me right now, because yeah. I realized, you know, as a single agent, um, I didn't have, I've only had but so much time to go around. And when I was, oh, yeah. mar when I was marketing, when I was marketing heavy, the calls just, they were nonstop. So I had to kind of figure out ways to kind of leverage um, chat. 
to my advantage. And but screen out certain people, and like mm-hmm. you're right, you can't talk to everyone. And if you if you spend equal time with the people one or six months from now, like you know how we're gonna eat today. So you gotta Absolutely. focus on the ones who are ready to go, or you know, let's go looking at houses. Great, and uh, you know, we we gotta move out from other place in a in a month. Great, correct, you know? exactly. Like, okay, Lorana, about Lorana will be calling you immediately. You know yeah. that that was so. Yeah, that's how we kind of worked it. So that was my first in- introduction to chat. I was probably say twenty twenty eighteen. Oh, okay, nice. Twenty eighteen. The real estate business. It, would you just hop right on with people and start chit chatting? How did it go? Um, so we built a funnel that would interact with our Facebook page. Okay. Um, and it would basic questions would be answered. You know, when are you ready to buy? Are you looking to buy or sell? You know, they say yes. Um, or they say sell. Then we route them one way. Buy, we route them another way. Both right. were based on time. So if they couldn't, you know, that time uh, was important. Yeah. And then, you know, ultimately my goal is to get them on a list. So getting their email up front so I can, you know, at least be mailing them, you know, properties and things like that. Um, anything, anybody that was looking to sell immediately got that call. Anyone nice. that was looking to buy within 30 days to, to 90 days got that call. Everyone else, you know, well, we'll email you this list and, you know, and you follow up later. Yeah. So um, and then I had virtual assistants that would, you know, message back on my behalf. Oh, so nice. they, yeah. So they think they're talking to Leron and they never were, but until, until I picked up the phone, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was pretty cool. It was pretty yeah, fun. It's very cool. <laughs> Tell me about this. So did you have to train them on how to act, act like you or th- were they just super straightforward? I mean. So, so I, in terms of virtual assistant, I leveraged them. They were interacting with my doing engagement more. Um, but for, um, for the, the chat bots, we just had certain questions and there would be a catch all phrase. So they would, it would be like a button where they could select and kind of go through the funnel that way. So if I say, are you looking to buy or sell? It was buy or sell there. Then they click sell. Then the next group of questions would ask. And I was okay. up front that it was a chat bot, you know, um, yep. it, when they, when they got to the bot, it was up front that they would be interacting with the bot. And I thought that was pretty cool to kind of make it fun that, you know, you're interacting with a bot, but we'll route you to, um, you know, right route you to someone as soon as you know possible. Right. Yeah. And then on the engagement side, I just had a virtual assistants acting on my behalf. So that was kind of two separate things. But once they got to a point where they needed to speak to me, if I wasn't available, someone would respond on my behalf. Mm. That's awesome. She had, you had a whole team behind the scenes. I had a small team. <laughs> yeah, supporting your brand though, right? It's like, hey, Absolutely. you want to work with me. And, Absolutely. And people kind of supporting that. That's sick. That's really cool. Yeah. Boom. Boom. In, you know, any, any lessons learned from those experiences? Did you ever see like, chat not working well or is there any time when maybe the people doing the chat for you didn't didn't do well or is it kind of more straightforward no in my case i i had the basic you know um basic questions uh basic things that i needed to know immediately right so it was all front loaded so it wasn't a long drawn out you know process at that point i could have probably grown it to be a little bit more robust um but i didn't i needed that front you know i needed that information up front I was getting a lot of get engagement online and it was yeah. actually easier than being on the phone. <laughs> so oh, yeah. you know, it was easier than taking those phone calls because totally. had they not interacted online, it would have been a phone call, which I'm a talker, right? So if I pick up this phone and this is when <laughs> I had to start valuing my time yeah. differently is because I could spend 30 to 40 minutes with someone that's not ready today. But I, me as a person, I want to. I want them to still feel the same way about me, regardless of whether they're ready to buy. And so I was giving everyone equal, you know, or close to equal amount of time and effort. I wanted them to see that I was a stand-up person, and I had a genuine energy about helping them and you know doing what was right by them. Right. And so, um, but I had to. I you know when when phone, other phone calls are coming in, and I yeah. you know I'm sending them the voicemail, or I couldn't accommodate them between me and my assistant. It was just, it was just a bit much. And, um, Sounds nutty. 
Sounds crazy. Yeah, it was good, it was it, it was busy? pretty hectic. Um, yeah. it was pretty hectic. Um, of course, these were learning and growing pains for me, yeah. which is why I implemented technology. You know, I had been in technology my whole career, and there yeah. was no reason why I wouldn't have implemented it in any business right. that I'm a part of. So that makes sense. You know what I love about that story too? The real estate background. I know we're gonna get into actual more background, but real estate i mean it's sales right like you're 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 helping people buy and sell but you're selling that you need people should work with you correct and so i mean it's such a hustle and then even that lesson about maximizing your time i mean that doesn't that help so much when it comes to actually being a marketer and working with oh absolutely people? absolutely which is why when i came to salesforce i really knew that i would be marketing i just didn't know win right yeah and you know when i when i gave my twitter handle leron markets that was from day one i yep. i had no idea that i would be in marketing really? immediately i thought i was going to be an admin and go oh, down sure. that path and you know when i look at some of the popular marketers in our space like you you know you guys been doing this for a long time and it's my belief it was my false belief that you all were admins first and then found your niche oh, right sure. And yeah, so yeah. that was what I thought I had to do. So in my mind, it would be years before, probably a couple years at least, before I found my way to marketing. But I wanted it to, in terms of branding myself, I wanted everyone to know that that was my end game. Yeah. So that's cool. Well, yeah. you know, it's like you pointed to the fence. And you're like, this is where I'm going. <laughs> Home run is about to happen. And then you just, <laughs> you're like, take a crack out and just bam, knock it out of the park. That's cool. Yeah. So that, you know, I, I knew it, you know, I love marketing. I'm passionate about marketing. I, I, I think I'm a closer. I don't know that I consider myself a salesperson, um, yeah. but I can sell. I think it's genuine. I have a genuine um, talent Yeah. of connecting with people, not necessarily selling or anything like that. Yeah. And so I'm learning more and more. And especially as you know, we talk about inclusion and things like that. I just have to be myself. And for for whatever reason, you know, people are drawn to me or, you know, appreciate me for who yeah. I am. And I'm happy that I can be myself and I don't have to be some something that I'm not. For sure. Well, you got this confidence and this authenticity, right? Where you're like, right. this is me. I'm pretty badass. Just take it as, <laughs> take it as it goes. Like, if you can't handle it, then... Yeah, and it's, and it's a bit know? much for some. It's a bit much for some, and that's okay. Everything is not for everybody, you know? Sure. Well, they're lost, I guess. You're like, whatever. But no, the, um, that authentic be yourself type mentality, that plays out well. And then you mentioned, you know, maybe not necessarily being that more of a marketer than a salesperson. I always found myself, I'm a great opener, right? I've got some, I've got some friends they're like good looking friends. They're like, they're closers, but like, I'm like the hi everyone. Um, guy. <laughs> yeah. I and think I'm a closer. Ties into marketing too. You're like, come leads, come, come to the castle. Then let sales just be like, Hey, you're going to buy. Right. <laughs> right. So yeah. But knowing what works for you is important too. Right. Yeah, we play yeah. to our strengths. We don't have to be good at everything. Exactly. You know, there's other people who can close for you if you're an opener and there's other people that can open for me if I'm a closer. Right. So yeah, maybe yeah. we should open and close for hey, each other. Hey. <laughs> you want to be the closer? Always right. be closing, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm the opener. Hey, let, let's let's hang out. Great. Here, talk to Laurent now. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Here, I'm gonna bring my partner in and come on in. Know. We're gonna have a little chit chat. <laughs> Laurent, lock the door. <laughs> let's do this. Um, man, this is great. Who are you? Like, take me back, like little Laurent days. Let's walk it. Let's understand the person because I think sometimes you're on stage or in social uh, but we're all people too and so like what's your story like did you always know you're gonna be in the army or be a marketer when you're when you're young not at all huh. um not at all i had no idea what i would do or become um i'm born and raised in long island new york okay um you know i spent a little time being a knucklehead as many of us have and then um when i was uh 17 uh, one of my good friends joined the military. I think I've talked about that a little bit and um, motivated me to to join, you know, but I was younger. It's so interesting. I was just saying to someone the other day, I used to be the youngest one in the room always. Like when you're the 17 year old in the military, everyone's older than you. Now I'm like one of the older ones in the room. And I don't know how comfortable I am with that, but 
But um, yeah, so I joined the military at a young age. I grew up in Long Island, um, Suffolk County. So you had this friend um, though that was like, she it was, it was she like she joined and then yes, she was like man, she was this older is than me. Oh, she's she was old. older than me. And so what happened was at, at 16, I went to Job Corps. I talk about that openly. I went to Job Corps early because I was in, being a knucklehead. Um, but I, I was a valedictorian of my program and I yeah. graduated a year early. So at that point, I had nowhere to go but to college, right? So when I go yeah. to college, like my friends are still in high school. I didn't know anyone. I was kind of awkward. And one of my friends who was about four or five years older than me had just joined the army. And one day I was just walking through the halls, you know, and there was a recruiter there. And mm. I, co I, you know, I had sent her a letter because back then we used to write, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what do you think about me joining the army? You know, how do you like it? And she loved it. And I was like, well, let's do it. And I signed a dotted line. To be honest with you, I had to get, I had to have, we had some issues at home for my mother did not want me to join the army. No. She was happy that I was in college early, yeah. you know, especially, um, you know, my mother has a college degree, so I'm not, you know, I'm not one of those who doesn't, you know, but she was yeah. probably first generation. So right. um, I would have been second generation, but that was like big, you know, like my knucklehead daughter is in college. Like, why would I want her to do anything else? So, yeah. Um, same, you know, by the way, same here. Like, uh, even though my dad was in the military, he was like, oh, grow your hair long. Go be like right. a driver. You know, I'm like, I don't know. I kind of want to join the military. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. So I That's had cool. to, you know, I had to get her to buy in. Um, Cause you, was, were, you were young, right? You were 17 and she had to sign off on it. Yep. She sure did. But I, like I say now, I don't care if she didn't sign, I would have probably signed her name. Cause I was going like my oh, mom, was damn. Like, I'm going, like you know, that. um, yeah. So yeah, I was ready. And of course I was really high speed, like in the military, I'll be honest. I was super high speed, but I was still a knucklehead. You know, I'm this young New Yorker, think I know everything, you know, yep. and um, <laughs> around a whole bunch of people from all over the world. Yep. And I had to, you know, adapt. It took me a little while, um, but people would always say to me, I see your potential. You have so much potential, you know, mm. I see your potential. So like when I would get away with things because I would be good at other things and it yeah. just worked out. Um, Do you think you saw your potential at that point? Um, I always knew that I had this big destiny. Yeah. Nice. And so that was one of the reasons why I got out because I felt like if I would have stayed in that I would never know. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, you're you're kind of locked in a, in a groove and you kind of, you're part of the machine and it's, it's right. it has its benefits, but the, you're right. The con is they're not like, Oh, Laurent, go experiment today and, and see. Right. <laughs> So no, I was it, like, you'll never yeah. know what you're meant to be. Yeah. You're meant to be. Meanwhile, the next 20 years I spent serving alongside the military in some capacity. So never really going all, you know, going yeah. away and doing my thing. But I used to want to be um, between a fashion designer and a radio uh, personality. Wow. <laughs> so I used to think I was going to be the next Wendy Williams. If, if you don't know who she is, <laughs> she went from radio and she's now a big celebrity on TV. But she started out in the, the New York a metro area. And, you know, back then there were only a few women on radio, you know, um, which is why podcast is always yeah. on my radar. Um, yeah, but yeah, you so, should do one. So I went, I went to college. Okay. Um, well, I joined the military. I got out, went to college, and then got deployed and went back to, the, to war. And, so wait, wait, know. wait. So you, you, you were in college. You left college, joined the Army. No. no oh yes yes yeah. you're right i forget about right? that it's <laughs> yes. your it's your life like i don't know I'm, I'm trying to pay attention so uh and so then yeah. in the army you so you left the army to go back to college but then you went back to the army again correct correct wow. so chris i just went back and forth back and forth but sure. i did i always took classes while i was in the military and then i got out and i went to uh the college of new jersey got um, it. believe it or not it's it's top new jersey state school i had no clue i just applied right yeah and i got there and i was like older than everyone because i'm in my 20s and you know everyone's like 18 17 and 18 and then we get called to go to war you know and Were you so like reserves I, or like some kind of RR? at that time i was national guard so when i got, got off it. of active duty i joined yep. the new jersey national guard Smart. in fact i had to join new jersey because new york <clears throat> excuse me we didn't have any funds because of 9-11 Got it. So uh, New York's, you know, economy was busted for a while. So I actually joined the New Jersey National Guard 
And originally I thought I was like going to commute from New York back and forth to New Jersey. And I learned quickly that that was not going to happen. So <laughs> yeah. I moved to New Jersey and um, right. I went to college in New Jersey. I met some awesome people. And then we deployed uh, to Iraq uh, from there. Where'd you go? Where in Iraq? Um, <clears throat> to Crete, um, FOB Danger. Okay. So to Crete was in the, if you know, Spiker. Um, I think it was FOB Spiker or something, but it, it was a big region. It was the um, Saddam's palaces were in that oh, area. God. So he had two That's major it. areas. It was the Tikrit area and the Baghdad area. And so the first time I was there um, and whew, so my school ended up doing a documentary on me. Really? Uh, yeah. So one of my professors realized that you know she you know they were oblivious to it and i came back to school after being at war and being deployed for 18 months i returned to school and she was just like wow so she started a documentary um and it, it it's it's online somewhere <laughs> right. it is out there it's on um vimeo i believe there's a link somewhere just another war i think it's called so if anybody wants to hear a little bit of that story that's What's it out called? there. Just, an, just another war. You said? Just another war. And it's all. It's all about you, or you? No. The... Um. I. It started. I, I was a, initially a part of the focus on the beginning, but I yeah. ended up moving to come to Georgia. In fact, and um, and she had some other characters. It's a blended story, um, but I, initially, I think it it started. If my memory serves me correctly, the idea and the concept was inspired by my journey of leaving school going to war and then coming back and it you know yeah. and then you know she finished the journey she finished the uh documentary over some time and i had already left and moved on to other things in my life got it got it what, what were you what was your job in the army i was telecommunications so okay. i did all the telephony uh cables i installed cables telephones and, you know, over time, as technology evolved, you know, we became what we call as IMOs or information management officers helping oh, with cool. overall IT. Yeah. So that's how I went from telecommunications into IT. Oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah. That's that's cool. Yeah, because that way yep. you can get into tech tech and IT as opposed to running lines and, and Correct, because it changed. Technology yeah. changed to the point where everything was starting to be more compact. Makes sense. Self, you know, just... So things, MOS has started to change. You know, we went through those phases where the MOS has changed, job descriptions and things changed. I don't even know if my MOS is still, um, you know, still valid anymore. It may be, I, I believe right. so, but um, yeah, so. Do you remember what it was called? Like it was like numbers and letters, right, for you guys? Oh, I was a 31 Lima and then it turned into a 25 Lima. And I think it's still probably 25 Lima. Huh. Yeah. Cable system install. I learned how to gaff poles. Really? Yeah. So bucket trucks, um, inside plant. I did inside plant where we installed the phones in all the houses on base. Huh. Um, yeah. So I did, you know, I did tactical and, um, you know, strategic. Yeah. So, um, and from there, you know, then I became a civilian, a contractor. I well, what, what was the rack like for you? Were you mostly on, uh, on a base doing the, the common there? Did you have to drive out anywhere? Was uh, yeah, there were, there were convoys, com, yeah. you know, going from back and forth. I wasn't on the road a lot. Thank God. Yeah, right. Um, I wasn't on the road a lot, but there was so much in my first deployment. Cause I've been over there multiple times. Uh, how many times have you been over there? Well, some of the other times were as a contractor, let's be clear, sure. but I was a military yeah, yeah. spouse. So my husband would be deployed and I'd be there as a contractor. And we went through that phase. Oh, that sounds I'm now, legit. I'm now divorced though. So uh. I don't speak about it now, but I was a military spouse for nine okay. years. Um, as well as I've been a DOD uh, GS civilian. I've been a contractor. I've been every uh, facet of uh, service. I've, wow. I've, I've been, so I've been a DOD, um, contractor, a DOD civilian, um, Jeez. a military spouse, as well as a reservist and national guards. <laughs> so, oh, you you kind of ticked all the boxes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, how many um, times so you I can deployed? relate. Um, Altogether. I would say as a contractor, three or four times. I've been really? in Afghanistan. 
Really? Oh, as, you, you got some time in there. Yeah, as a military. So before I had my daughter, who is now six, I was just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But I'm sure you were collecting that money up because of all uh, that tax yeah. free. Yeah. <laughs> we always well, joke that. Was, the, that was ahead. the incentive. Sorry. So the first time I actually deployed, the first time I went, I deployed to Iraq with the New Jersey National Guard. Yeah. And then when I returned, I moved to Georgia. I remember I was telling you. I did the documentary and I left. I came to Georgia yeah. to be a reservist and I was trying to go PAO, which is public broadcast, right? God, so I yeah, wanted yeah. to be, you know, a yeah, journalist. Yeah. Get that microphone, However, right? the unit was assigned to a signal unit, which is what my background is in. And as soon as they seen my MOS, they pulled me to go to another deployment. So oh, that geez. vision was gone, right? So yeah. I'm like, okay, hmm, you know, what am I going to do here? You know? And then one of my good friends had just landed a, a contract and role and she put me on and the rest was history. I made some really good friends. I've been down there a few times. I've served with the Marines multiple times. Oh yeah. Um, the third ma, the second ma, the third ma, like the Marine air wing. So I've been in Al-Assad. Um, I've been at Leatherneck in Afghanistan, at Al-Assad. And look, this is going to turn into a, mili a military Maybe. thing. Maybe. Who but, cares, right? Okay, I, I'm so, interested. Did so you ever I'll, get out to the Fallujah area? No. Okay. Fallujah was not my jam. No, that was no. my, my area over there. That's where yeah. we, we hung out. Yep. So I was We could have hung out. We're like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Remember me? Yep. So, yeah, I've been with the Marines on several occasions. That's cool. Um, uh, one of my good friends married a Marine, you know, uh, uh -huh. so yeah, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> you know, we, I've been with uh, probably four rotations of Marines. Cause wow. you know, you guys only do six months, only do six, six months. You know why, right? You know why? Because you guys are, <laughs> I don't know. Cause we get <laughs> done in six or seven months. What takes the army a year and a half? To I do. don't know about all that's, that. That's why. I don't know about all of that, but <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I've been with multiple rotations. Of okay. Um, wow. Some Navy. Yep. I'd only been over there once. So you just, you got stripes up and down your arms and over around your head <laughs> and everything being over there. all that. But you know, we always joke the, um, the guy that drove the bus at Camp Fallujah, I think he was making like a hundred grand or something a year um way more than all of us we're like he's got the real job he's just I driving know. the bus on the base <laughs> totally safe um but yeah wow. well it depends because um my first go round, like you know over the years it got less and less dangerous you right. know yeah but the first go round, nobody was safe <laughs> yeah you, you, nobody was safe the first few rounds you know no one was safe and then you know things started to slow down yeah. so chill um, a little bit yeah totally Wow. 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 So eventually you're doing like contractor defense. What, what got you into the Salesforce ecosystem? Hmm. Okay. So let's, let's bring it full circle. Let's do it. Let's bring so, it. So, um, I, when I was a GS, um, my last, uh, um, translate that for people who don't know what the GS a general is. scheduled civilian. So it's a, we're a DOD department of defense or department of the army civilians. We're federal employees that work for the army. So cool. I still serve the army all my entire career. Wow. I've never left the side of the, the military, right? I've always yeah. served. Um, and so, um, in fact, when I was pregnant, my actual, my husband was deployed to Afghanistan. He literally made it just in time for me to have my first child. Wow. And then um, our next deployment was to Korea. So um, <laughs> so I left, I, I love Korea. So I left um, the States and we went to Korea for two years and wow. then we, we separated. So once we separated, I tell this story. I know some people may have heard this part. It's like I haven't you heard come it. Back, you cut Don't off worry about ear. anybody else. I haven't I, heard it. I, okay. All right. So I'm sorry. So it was like, I, you know, I cut it off my hair. I wanted to reinvent myself. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to do real estate because real estate has always been on my heart. I've owned my first home at the tender age of 25. Okay. And it was something that I thought would be lucrative and something I'd be passionate about. In addition to, I'm just a creative. So while technology, I can do it. I'm a creative at heart, like, yeah. you know, and so yeah, to be yeah. able to mix the two, I feel like that's why marketing or MarTech, why I'm in MarTech right now, because it's a blend of the two, the creative side right. and the technology. Um, but, you know, um, when I came, when I returned from Korea, you know, I started this new career um, of, you know, doing real estate, but 
over time as a single woman now and a single parent, I realized that I needed stability, but I had been out of IT for now three and a half years, you know, three years. So it was like, okay, we need to sharpen, you know, sharpen our tools, you know. Maybe get your weekends back too, right? (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. So believe it or not, I did a lot on the weekdays. I was able to leverage, you know, my weekdays when I wanted to. And now when you don't want to, you know, but, um, so I actually, um, was Googling like, okay, you know, cause I had Microsoft certs and I, but everything back then was on prem and I kept seeing about cloud, cloud technology and cloud this yeah. cloud that. So, you know, I stumbled across Salesforce and, um, the only thing I wanted to know was would they accept my GI bill so I could learn, you know, like, yeah. so I tried to go develop a route, but I had no knowledge of the tools and I had to take a step back from so, that. Yeah. And then I, you know, I learned about vet force at the time. And then um, when I, when I made the decision um, about a year or so ago, I made the decision full time or not or nothing, right? Like, like you're yeah. going to either, if you're going to do Salesforce, cause I had known about it for about a year prior to really. Um, and I had been involved in it. Like I had done a few trails, but it was nothing. No, it was very leisurely, you know, very casually, yeah. you know, when I have time or when I feel like it. And so when I made the decision to, um, to put real estate down temporarily yeah. to focus, um, that was about almost a year and a half ago, you okay. know, and, um, that's when I pursued uh, Salesforce aggressively. But cool. prior to that, you know, it was just, you know, a leisurely, you know, activity. You know, I thought, um, you know, I thought that I could learn a little bit and it would translate into a job field and it sure. kind of wasn't that way. And I realized like certification was the way to go. And then of course, leveraging Vet Force and then Mervis, I just maxed it to the, you know, I, I pushed it to the max. It was like, excuse me. Um, it was like, um, okay, I'm an admin now. Okay. I go to the, you know, so I go to the job boards, you know, and I did, uh, I I probably did 50 plus interviews. You know, I did a lot of interviews. Um, I sucked in the beginning. I I can say that now, Yeah, right. (laughs) but now I I realized I just sucked and I, so I I kept going, I kept pushing. It was a little, you know, it had, it had its highs and lows, you know, going through that journey. And now when I talk to others who are now starting their, their journey, I have a little bit more insight, you know, um, I, and now I realize if you have a skill, you know, a special skill, and I'm starting to hear this repeated throughout the community, you know, like, um, Yaya, for example, there's, she's a Pep of Tech graduate. She has a background in insurance, right? Mm. And when she leveraged her and, and started focusing on companies that dealt with insurance she found a job like that so those are the kind of things that um you know i talk to um people about it's like okay what's your background you're in service okay maybe you need to focus on service cloud you know yeah. and leverage that you tie know, those in together finance, correct yeah, that's smart. because there's just not that much talent and there's not that much specialization when it comes to the new pool of you know of town the new talent pool you know admin yeah. pool so kind of like I was saying is like, it, you know, for me, I had this real estate and this marketing background and I knew that I was going to eventually get to it. But I, one day a light went off and was like, why not today? You know? Um, and yeah. so, yeah, I don't need to be an admin and I'm, you know, I'm more passionate about marketing. I'm going to be a better marketer than I'm going to be an admin anyway. So why do I need to be an admin to prove to someone else when I have valid marketing experience i have valid technology experience totally you know i've got all this stuff here and i'm trying to go an entry level route and it just you know eventually uh, you know my will started spinning but you know until you know someone can show you proof in the pudding right and someone can lay out a foundation for you which uh, no one did that for me because everyone's story is different and everyone is pursuing different things yeah so there's not a real roadmap to um, a personalized journey. You know, there's no roadmap to that. It's and true. So now, you gotta blaze a trail. 
Exactly. I get it, but there should be some tips and some tricks along the way, you know? What, so, do you, what would you tell other people? What do you tell other people? On the um, I would say if you find a, a space that you're passionate about, focus there, period. It doesn't have to necessarily be something that you've done before, but I'm passionate about marketing. And when I interviewed on marketing, my numbers went way up, right? I, yeah. I got th I got two out of three jobs offers out of the three interviews. But whereas when I was doing, you know, uh, I was doing um, admin, you know, I'm going, yeah, I was getting to third and fourth level interviews, but at the end of the day, I wasn't the best candidate, right? But right. when I started talking to marketing, I was passionate about it. My energy showed, um, you know, and it was just an easier conversation to have. Uh -huh. So even if you don't have experience, but you're passionate about it, you understand it. You know, I was a little rusty, you know, in, in my marketing skills a little bit too, you know, sure. but I still understood it. Nothing changed, you know, uh, convert, you know, knowing how to figure out a conversion rate and count leads does not change. No. <laughs> so, so ultimately um, I found, you know, and I'm blazing my trail, right? Cause this is still yeah. the beginning of my journey, you know, and my ultimate goal is to, to be a podcaster and an author, kind of like yourself. So I'm, it's an honor to be here with you today. Sure. And, no, likewise. Um, yeah, definitely. And to just, you know, I want to learn about you too. Like, how do you go from being a marketer to having a top, you know, part of firm to authoring a book? Yeah. Like uh, one bite at a time, you know, um, they're kind of, we're very similar. Like, I kind of just try stuff out, you know? Um, same thing for me and the Marines. It's just like, huh, that sounds cool. They actually told me they didn't want me. That's what got me uh, inspired. They're like, yeah. first of all, we're not going to give you any bonus, really any choice of anything. Oh, and we don't want you. So I was like, wait, what? Everyone else was like, we want you. And they're like, no, we don't want you. But the Marines <laughs> didn't want you? Whoa. That's... Yeah, I was out of shape. I. <laughs> you know, I'd been drinking too many peppermint mochas and I was just like, yeah, you coming in to just check things out. And they're like, yeah, no. So I just got started getting in shape and, you know, so it's kind of been the story, you know, challenges kind of in, intrigued me, but you know, all those different things, I think you, you hit it on the head with the passion, you know, as long as you stay in that passion zone, I think sometimes as you're going and doing these things, you can get, get kind of stuck like, like in the army or anywhere where it's like, Ooh, it's now it's a job I'm not really passionate right. about anymore. And then right. you just got to pause and in, in, like, where can I redirect this? So that I get back in that passion zone where I'm excited, you know? And um, I can, re I, I can relate to that. Yeah. To tie that into what you just said. I think all the rejection was like, okay, well, what am I going to do next? Right. You know? And that's how I went from just one cert to five certs in, you know, maybe 12 or 14 months. It was like, okay, well, now I've done this. I've yeah. done your app builder. I've done this. And now I'm going to focus on what I want to do. And then I'm going to be a better candidate than you ever thought, you know, right. but, but that just shows my work ethic. Now, someone could have given me a shot along the way and seen that I still have this work ethic, but yeah. you know, I, I had to do it up front and that's fine, you know, to each his own, but thank you for sharing. But you know, the rejection for me was a motivator. It well, it, forced it can, me to it's one or the other, right? Either rejection tanks us and, sends us into sad land or we get inspired ticked off pissed whatever it is to take some positive action so it's like that's the call you have to make inside and it sounds like you know you've definitely made those calls you know we can kind of relate to each other where it's like well I, I could even been like oh the marine corps doesn't want me and then like 20 years later been like i always wonder what it'd be like to be in the marines they said they Absolutely. didn't want me you know i'll right. be like hell no i'm gonna I you know, ran all summer, Rocky theme song, like just getting in shape at the track. I remember running around the track and the sun blazing down on me, just being like, I'm going to show those guys. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with you. Like if you had like 50 interviews and people like, yeah, no, thanks. You're, you're a nice person. You'd be like, no, okay, cool. Well, I'm just going to step up my game and then it's going to be. Right. You know? I mean, game even JK on. Rowling, right? She shopped Harry Potter and people are, t you know, who's the dummy? There's right. <laughs> some, there's like a real person out there, at least seven like of them. Turned, right. Read that thing. It was like, nah, it'll never be huge. You know, like people rejected that. So absolutely. So you can't get turned around by it, you know? Yep. And I definitely would say that my time in the military kind of shaped 
and gave me that tenacity to keep yeah. pushing and and keep fighting and you know what I'm saying and not to right. accept the defeat you know um and so here we are you know here we are and you know uh, back to messaging and branding you yeah. know um I don't know if you remember but I I I I did that video when we were going to TDX and um I did the little short 30 minute 30 second 60 second video for um for my who am i tdx video and it kind of uh, went viral and, and mark video ops retweeted it yeah but no, that was no, no. yeah I, your was, social was, game is off the hook it, well sure. it was like, very strategic right because i at one point we were all shooting these videos and i i recorded the video like probably two weeks before you know and i was like okay this is coming up you know Game of Thrones was coming on and I just I just linked the two together and that was pure like I mean not like I'm you know what I mean but it was like it was very um but that's who I am like the person that's gonna make jokes and you know I I, you know I I brought it into my messaging yeah I even showed some of my crappy editing skills but you know I had things like flying in the video you know but it was very much a representation of who I am. Right. And, um, and I think that that was like the beginning of my personal branding journey, you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm happy well, to be here. It was intentional. It was intentional on your part, but it was also authentic. So I think that, I mean, sometimes when people are like, ooh, let me, what would be more viral if I was like some other fake person or whatever? No, you're like, right. I gotta, I bet I can, time this right here so let me do this the right way but also i'm going to be 100 percent myself and give yourself permission to be fun quirky right. nerdy geeky i mean you said salesforce training at certs was your leisure time earlier and i was going to make fun of you and be like <laughs> nerd alert but um like, i'm the only like colorful black creative super nerd that you know what i mean like yeah it's like i'm torn between am i a nerd or am i a cool kid like i don't know where you know what i mean like, yeah right in the low I, i'm a nerd yeah. but like you know like i i guess i i don't know because i'm a creative or you know i i love like the fun and energy side you know i guess i'm just a new generation of nerd yeah <laughs> but you know I'm, like i've heard it like nerds rule the world and i'm okay with that so you know, so I'll be a cool kid. Nerd. I, both, yes, I think. I think, I think you're both. I'm not all the way on the nerd. I'm not tipped on the nerd scale. I'm kind of more in the middle of that. that yeah, means, but, but that's how you, you <laughs> connect with people. So to your point about marketing, like marketing is all about connecting with other people, solving their pain. And you can't, you can't do that if you're not like, if you can't feel that they've got some pain and you really care and you want to help them. So that, that part of you is helpful. Otherwise, you would be in IT. You would just be a dev. Not right. just a dev, but like right. for you, hey. you would be focused on dev, but no, you're kind of like tech and people, human and technology kind of merge right. them together. Yeah. I think it's a nice space. It's a comfortable space for me. Yeah. Well, don't get too comfortable, right? Because then you, then you, then you kind of chill out. You got to stay uncomfortable. That's what everyone says, except not in the wintertime. Like right now, I know you're d- down south, but like it's snowing right now. It's like pouring snow in New Hampshire right now. Man, we haven't we we don't get much snow, but like yesterday was seventy three degrees. Oh. <laughs> but the a few days before we were in the thirties. So this, uh, yeah, this this weather here is like I'd rather just know like tomorrow is gonna be cold and it's gonna be cold for the next three months. You're right. The games where it goes up and down. That's where people get sick, and you're just like, ah, oh, you, you're like, am, am I supposed to be wearing my fleece or jacket or t-shirt like i don't know right absolutely but we have to stay bundled up because you know if we don't yeah you gotta you gotta keep the kids bundled up they're like yeah. i'm gonna go to school in a t-shirt no you're not put your coat on yeah <laughs> so this has been fun yes what, what do you got what's coming up next where are you going any, any places you got coming up any kind of Travel um, or touring or what what's your focus on? I am going to Spain. What? Um, I'm going to Spain in February. Hell and yeah. I am going to try um with my with my job, I'm going to Spain and I am going to um the Mobile World Congress. If you're familiar with that. I've heard about that, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to Barcelona and then yeah. um I'm gonna try and me and my buddy CISO, he's going to New York World Tour if you're going. Oh yeah, we'll have to talk offline. You have to connect us up. 
Yeah, yeah so if um, me and him are going to try to submit for Southeast Dreaming to speak. So I, I put it out there to the world. So put if we don't there. speak, you know, we're dropping the ball because we need to start doing these things now. You know, now that we've got a little experience under our belts and we've graduated, you know, and we're in phase yeah. two of our journey, you know, um, I think it's time for us to share with others, to inspire others, to bring others into our community and, you know, um, and then just be a voice for some of the more underrepresented uh, people in this community. Yeah. Well, you're doing a fantastic job being evangelist, especially for veterans. I mean, we need a second mission, right? You get out, your life's been so wrapped up in just serving that one purpose you get out and that was sometimes it's exciting, right? You're like, right. Jason Bourne, you're in dangerous places, but then <laughs> you get out and you're like, what's exciting. Oh, what am I going to have for dinner tonight? You know? So people right. need that other chat. They need that next challenge, the next mission. So I'm stoked that you're connecting people up with, Hey, Maravis, vet force or yeah, military Salesforce. trailblazer, whatever they want to call it. Yeah. Salesforce Saturday. Like I bring my daughter, yeah. we just did our white elephant, you know, gift exchange for oh, Christmas. Cool comes you know and soon i i'm thinking i might have like something for the kids real soon like she's reading now so when wow. she knows how to build you know process builders at 12 or 10 you know like that's coming like i Watch know out. That's coming. yeah so yeah start your own little company so yeah like you know <laughs> salesforce admins you know for 10 year olds i i mean i, I don't know but it's, it's gonna happen you know what'll happen though you, you unleash her on that she'll end up being better than you and like oh definitely 14 she's already... she's like mom that's so inefficient what you're doing <laughs> like this absolutely. is the way to do that don't use flow like what are you doing absolutely like, she's already running the remote control the yeah, tablet like fix my me. process and then wash up for dinner you know <laughs> absolutely so yeah i'm excited um cool. i'm excited about that like um I tell her every day, you know, you're going to learn to code, you know, so that's just something that she's thinks she's got to learn to do. You know, I, cool. I don't really code, but, um, you know, I just want her to know that she's capable and never to doubt it, you know, yeah. and we're going to see the next generation of, you know, more women devs and, you know, and women doing all kinds of things that were typically and traditionally male dominated. So yeah, I mean, I'm do what you love, right? That. Like who you are, what, where you're from what you do like let's get more people doing what fascinates them right you know? absolutely yeah totally where can people connect with you if they want to reach out get inspired join your tribe just be like in your fan club where twitter uh, linkedin what are some you can connect with go? me at um laron markets underscore underscore c on Twitter, and then you can also connect with me at Laron Butler on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, those are my two Salesforce socials, you know. Right. Um, and that's how I stay involved. Um, I'm definitely approachable. I will talk to anybody who's willing to talk to me. So, you know, don't feel like, you know, you can't reach out and have a conversation. Um, I'm not in a in a position to buy your products, so <laughs> <laughs> you know, sure we can connect, but yeah, um, yeah, no, for genuine connection, you know, genuine. If you need anything, if I can help anyone, I will, and that's what I do. Yeah, especially if you're a veteran or, or you're just looking to get into the Salesforce community and learn more about it, connect. I mean, I would, I'm, I'm, you know, she's offering, so pick her brain. You know, connect up on LinkedIn or. It, it, when you do, don't be a creepy stalker. Like you're going to sell her something like say, right. Hey, I heard your pod <laughs> podcast. It was amazing. Absolutely. Can I ask you a question? Like then she'll accept you. Don't be like, and then don't do one of those emails afterwards saying, you know, four paragraphs by my thing. <laughs> right. Right. And then also, if you want to learn more about Mervis or, um, mil Salesforce military. <laughs> I know it's a rebrand. Speaking of brand, <laughs> they rebranded and, um, and, um, you know, formerly Vet Force, um, I definitely am a product of both those programs. They were instrumental in my success and they work. Do you want to talk and about Maravis real quick? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You start from yeah. zero. What, if people don't know, like what, what are they and then how did they help you? So Mervis is a nonprofit offer, uh, organization that also trains, um, trains veterans and military spouses in Salesforce and they're a high touch program. 
Um, so with Vet Force, it's more remote um, or Salesforce Military Trailblazer. They're more remote. You know, you do your trails just like Trailhead, and it's synced with with Trailhead. Um, with Mervis, it's more like a cohort style. Um, you you choose you know a path or course you apply so you must apply and the sooner you apply the better um and actually mervis is growing so they're now starting to bring um classes to other cities whereas i spent all of my classes i actually went to texas and attended um in texas where they originally started right but they're growing so much now that they're offering classes in dc um boston uh Seattle, Washington, Texas, and I think pretty soon, 2020, if I have my way, they'll be coming to Atlanta as well. Right on, so, yeah. yeah. So, um, so I, um, I jumped right in. I actually did admin on my own, um, leveraging wow. VetForce, but for App Builder, for Community Cloud, and for Marketing Cloud, I went through Mervis. So I've attended three separate cohorts. I met some amazing students, like you know, trailblazers that are doing what you're doing, if not more, right? right? And for some others who will be inspired by, you you know, um, but each class is looking to the class before them to, you know, kind of lead the way and we connect and it's, it's one big family um, and a lot of success stories, a lot of success stories. And the culture there is, it's just very high touch and intimate and personal. Yeah. And um, some of, you know, the people I care about the most in the community are, fellow um vet force um uh, alumni God. i mean excuse me excuse me see how confusing that was sorry I know. fellow mervis alumni also vet uh, force you know but right. mervis alumni so um we just have these connections and these bonds and you know one of the stories i share if you if you know this guy he's an amazing name christian estevez you know when i started my journey early early on um i'm financially I was strapped I was trying to go to Texas and go on do all these classes and you know I was looking for a job and he was like well you really need to be at Southeast Dreaming and I was like I can't afford that Mm -hmm. and you know he went out his way out of the kindness of his heart to reach out to the community to see about getting me a pass and that thing that he did for me touched me melted my heart and it showed me the kind of kindness and the kind of um fearless you know, advocates that we have in here that advocate for one another. And because, you know, since that, you know, like I've committed now this year, Southeast Dream, and I'm going to donate a ticket to someone who needs it. Oh, that's And awesome. just pay it forward. So these are the kind of things that we genuinely do for each other. And um, we bond and connect over. And that one act of kindness kind of changed the trajectory of who I'm going to be in this Ohana. Mm-hmm. And it, it, one, it melted my heart. And usually every time I talk about it, I cry. <laughs> So right now my eyes are watering, but I I'm know, not No, I didn't know. I mean, he's a great guy, but yeah, I didn't realize so, he'd done that. Yeah, that's, that's my cool. buddy. And so, you know, early on, you know, he's one of the ones that I do communicate with when, and sometimes he's got to pat me on my shoulder and say, you got this, Leron, like you're going to do it. And I do that for him as well. But, you know, that act of kindness, he's just a genuine person, but there are a lot of us. And, you know, it's almost like because we're no longer in the military, it's a piece of our life that's no longer there. Mm-hmm. And we kind of bring that, you know, the camaraderie back, even though we're all in different services and, you know, and we each one teach one, you know, we help each other and we're truly each other's, what we like to say in the military is battle buddies. Yeah. And so we support one another. And um, he did that for me. And I wanted to highlight that here because I probably don't That's talk cool. about it enough. A lot of people, you know, I had no idea. Yeah. Oh yes. And that was, he allowed me to attend um, by his act of kindness reaching out, you know, I was, you know, um, they may, you know, I was able to get a land a ticket yeah. to go to Southeast Dreaming and that changed my life. I met wow. some of the, some of the MVPs and the people that put on the event, um, that I didn't have an opportunity to know, you know, I got yes. really started to build relationships, started to grow my confidence. Um, and because up until that point, I had only gone to world tour and I had only met one or two other vet force members, you know, so it just, yeah. and it just keeps snowballing. And so we do this for, for each other and we support, we try to bring vets to the community. We try to bring as many people we can to Salesforce. 
um, and to understand that it's a free platform and we can all leverage that. Yeah. But we also live in reality, right? Like, you know, don't come to me if you're not ready to do the work. I'll just, uh-huh. keep, I'm just going to keep it real. It's not easy. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's doable. It's hard work. It's, yeah. it's, you know, but it's doable. It's not, you know, unattainable, attainable, but you have to be committed and you have to find that commitment for yourself. Right. And for me personally, it wasn't until I made that hard decision and drew a hard line in the sand that this is needed to get done. And this is what I needed to do. That's when I pursued it aggressively. And I, um, you know, I started to um, fi- hit my milestones and exceed my milestones and have some success. But it was those acts of kindness and those programs that led me to meet other people that are just like me, you know, to expand my network. So the community, if I could leave with this, whether you're a marketer or just in Salesforce, um, having a community around you is key, it's important, yeah. or being the community or starting a community. But that community, if not for yourself, do it for others because yeah. that sense of community is what keeps people on the journey, you know. And, you know, when they're getting ready to fall out, they've got someone like myself or you to pick them back up. And, you know, you've even been a part of that journey because I've been saying I'm going to do part out <laughs> forever, you know. And I, you know, I finally am part out certified. Yeah. You know, it took me. You know, that was the most recent cert that I got. So I did everything else but Pardot, you know, when initially that was my first, you know, marketing cert that I was going to pursue. Well, it is the best so. too. <laughs> I'm biased though. <laughs> but hey, you know that, so you're going to, you're going to kind of pass that forward. You're going to get someone else a ticket for. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you, do you want for me too? Like, we'll, uh, we'll, do, we'll get a ticket as well. So you, but you pick, you pick. So. Okay someone else as well and then okay. just let me know we'll get them a ticket because i love to help you with that um do you keep so doing it instead you know? we'll have two so maybe i, I can leverage two. that to market it and raffle it off and brand yeah. ourselves but whatever you whatever you want to do with it just now you got two tickets so okay that's yeah, awesome that for sure that's awesome awesome well, this but yeah is, that was yeah that was amazing well, this no. is fantastic. I mean, you're amazing but i think this is important that you know we learn talk about marketing but then we just talk about people you know because i think that's that's important part of this too so right well this has been fun you survived <laughs> look at the clock you i was time. nervous i was nervous look i was like oh, yeah. man, what if i'm you know but yeah this has been pretty just fun nervous. Just you need your own through. podcast we'll talk offline but you need get your own podcast yesterday i'm too busy getting certs i know <laughs> No more certs. My, I, I don't think. I don't know. I think I do want to pursue Einstein and really tie it all together. Einstein's legit. Yeah. Einstein and commerce. I feel like because I like B. I I love B to C. Although you know I'm in B to B. Yeah. Um, but I I do like B to C. So, you know, I think there's some potential, some some room for growth out there for me and in, in my career and my future. You know. Hell but yeah. I, Hell yeah. yeah. You'll have to come back on and update us on where everything's at and uh, tell us about your podcast after you've launched it, you know? Yeah. Hopefully you'll mentor me through that. Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> I, got all, I got all sorts of lessons learned on what not to do. So I'll okay. tell you what all those are. Awesome. Well, <laughs> stay tuned. Maybe in 2020, you'll see, you know, my podcast. I don't know what I'm going to name it, but. Well, scary I, things happen when you focus all that energy on one thing, you know? So listening yeah. to your story, when you do that, it just. It, it happens when you when right. do that. So. so can't wait to see what happens if, you know, if, if that gets some energy, that'll be amazing. So, yeah. But thank you so much for coming on here just chatting and sharing your knowledge, you know, learning from you and learning more about you. It's been so much fun. Thank you. This was really fun. Yeah. I, 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 this was really fun. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we need a part two, even before the podcast, but maybe, or yeah. maybe that's, that's, that's the stick that gets you to do that podcast is okay. We'll come chat again, but we got to get you moving forward, but, but we will, we will definitely let's chat offline too. And you know, whatever kind of advice and info I can get you on the podcast, we get, get that thing cranking. Cause you're, you're a natural at this, you know, I don't know if you realize that, but yeah, it'd be so much fun. I would for sure, you know, add your podcast to my phone. Like is the day it comes out. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe we'll do a poll. Who wants to hear my podcast? I don't yeah, know. right. So, <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I definitely need to make that happen. So thank you for, um, you know, your motivation and your inspiration. Totally. totally. I'm happy. I'm happy to do it. I mean, you're doing such amazing work. 
And for everyone out there listening, if you learn something from this, whether it's about, you know, how to advance your career in the Salesforce ecosystem, some of the marketing talk where we're sourcing out, you know, brand and segmentation, those kind of conversations are just, you just felt good or inspired after this. Share this with someone else so you could be a thought leader with even one person. If you share it with one person, now you're helping them out. Or maybe, maybe Lenore can inspire them and uh, they can relate to her story. So you know, get the word out. And other, other than that, you know, Laurent, thank you again for being on here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. For everyone out there listening, this has been the Hardcore Marketing Show. We'll catch you all next time. All right, a big thank you to today's sponsors. Cheshire Impact, helping marketers and sales win, maximizing the use of Pardot and Salesforce. And a big thank you to Qualified.com, the number one live chat and chat bot platform for Salesforce and Pardot. Remember the giveaway. If you have Salesforce Pardot and you want a free copy of my book, Marketing Automation Unleashed, then you go over to Qualified.com, engage in the chat, do a demo and tell them that Casey sent you and that book will be on its way to your door. All right. We'll see you on the next one. 